Hello and welcome to Planning Your Albrecht Dirt Drawings. My name is Eric. Today we're going to be talking about taking a source material and translating that to a larger drawing. Um, I have chosen my woodblock print. Uh, this is labeled Astronomer in the year 1500. Um, lots of uh, tight detail uh, kind of throughout. Um, kind of an intimidating sort of drawing to start if you've never done something like this before. Uh, but we're going to try and break it down in a couple different ways uh, to make it easier to see. Um, so what we're going to be showing you is not like a full foolproof uh, way of always making perfect proportions, uh, but it is a way of starting to see things a little bit easier uh, and will help you immensely um, when starting to break this drawing down. Uh, looking at materials, um, I do have my uh, liners here, my artist grade pens. Uh, I have some Microns, and I have some Winsor & Newton uh, brand pens. Both are really good. Um, I might kind of experiment using both of these uh, in this drawing. Um, that being said, usually it makes sense to stick with one if you can. Um, once again, either way, that is going to be uh, later in the drawing. Right now we're going to be doing most of it uh, in graphite, and we're going to be making some planning marks. So. Thinking about my source material, translating this to that. First question is if there is an axis that is larger than the other. Obviously, this is taller than it is wide, so I'm going to be planning this uh, in a vertical orientation. Uh, if it was horizontal, I would make it horizontal. If it is square, uh, you have to actually edit part of this off uh, to create um, an 18 by 18. This is 18 by 24, so you have to trim significant portion, or you can stretch it out a little bit. Um, everybody's going to be a little bit different, but this is sort of a very simple way of breaking down composition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler. This is sort of a very large ruler. Um, makes it a little bit easier on these diagonals. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and find the perfect center of this page for a number of reasons, mainly to see proportions more accurately. So I'm coming side to side. I'm drawing a mark there. Fairly light. Once again, these are planning marks. Uh, they will not be in your drawing at the end. So you want to be able to see them, but you want them to be able to reduce at the end so they don't stain your page. Uh, so that one went a little bit light, but I can still see it. Maybe tough on the camera. Uh, so I have an X. So this is the center of my page. What I'm going to try to do now is I'm going to try and cut this in half as well. And sometimes it's not perfect. We're not really going for perfect. We're just going for close to. What I try and do is try and line up angles on the edges at 90 degree here and here. We'll go down a little bit here. That's a good way of trying to see it. And as long as it goes through the center there, you're good to go. Uh, a little bit low. That's okay. If it's like a centimeter off, it really doesn't matter. Again, these are guides. And most of Albrecht Durer, uh, his woodcuts are immensely detailed. To have things a little bit off are not going to be the end of the world. So, I now have eight quadrants, uh, and my center has been developed. It might be difficult to see on that, um, but it's there. I'm going to do the same thing on my source material now. Uh, I'm going to make those lines going from corner to corner, vertical and, uh, and horizontal. And I'm making sure I'm going only in the area of the drawing or the print that I want to draw. None of the negative space. And these I'm going to make a little bit more prominent. Sometimes I like to do these in ink, but sometimes that can be confusing because the ink of the printer looks strangely similar to the ink of a liner. So it could make sense to do this in a different color as well. Just remembering that these are planning marks so you can start to see things more easily. And these will make sense here in a minute. So I've come in. I've done the same marks here that I've done here. And that's all the planning I'm going to be doing. Uh, I'll show you how to break it down a little bit further if we need. 
Um, but as you can see, I have the lines all here. I know that this is the center of my print. I know that this is the center of my page. I'm now going to use this guide and this guide to translate detail from here into my larger drawing. A couple things to think about. There's going to be a lot of detail and a lot of sort of internal hatching uh, that's creating value. I'm going to try and not worry about that and really not worry about line quality or anything like that yet. I'm really just trying to focus on proportions. Uh, so you'll see here the right side of his head crests here is to the left side of center line. So I'm going to be planning his head here. I'm going to be planning the sphere uh, down and right from center mark. Uh, and then I'm going to be planning a few other parts of his body uh, determined by uh, these lines. Um, so I'm not going to start with a lot of detail. I'm going to sort of just blob some stuff in. And I'm, once again, using the lines that I've made, my measurements, as a guide. I see that his beard comes down below center, comes back up. There's some facial features here, but I'm really not going to even try and knock them out yet. Another thing is negative space. If you can observe not only the objects, but the space around the objects, the space here uh, between his beard and the top of his sleeve, and then the negative space here, if you can get this negative space accurate, you'll know that the sleeve is accurate. Uh, so looking at space, uh, not only in the objects, but there are the space around the objects uh, can help you see space more accurately. Okay, so here's a, uh, a sphere here. Trying to do my light sphere. Something like that. He has his hand here with a sort of cartographer tool. This might be lower. Notice that this is a very sketchy phase. I'm really just trying to observe detail as I go. I'm really not trying to dive into anywhere too deeply. I'll have plenty of time for that when the time comes. But for now, I'm just going to be moving around light and loose and look for areas of detail. Like these feet are important. If I can get the feet placed fairly accurately, the rest of the robe will sort of loosely plan in. I'm saying that the robe is to here, then this globe is way small. I'm going to make that globe a lot larger, which is good. There's a lot of detail in it be good to make it a little bit larger but that makes more sense for the little for the little tool in his hand too as far as space here okay sitting in this weird throne once again observing space between the right side of the throne and center line they're both almost perfectly vertical so I'm gonna come and plan that this Top of the throne almost comes to center line here, comes past this, all the way out to here. Another big vertical coming down there. And there's the curvature of this guy, top of the crown here. So the good thing about sketching in graphite uh, is that we are going to be lining these drawings with ink, as we were talking about at the beginning, which will cover up any sort of mistakes and things that you have. Uh, this may look very light on uh, the camera. Uh, that's because I like to work very, very light. I actually tried to push it a little bit heavier in a couple areas, so maybe it can be seen a little bit better. But for these trees, or for any sort of detail, I'm really not trying to actually draw them yet. I'm just trying to place them. Sun up here. That's a nice size. Okay. So as you'll see, um, I'm going to be continuing to draw. Uh, I'm going to start from this larger detail and slowly build into the forms. 
Um, rather than trying to focus on one area too deeply, too early, uh, that is a, uh, a mistake. You really want to be able to move around the drawing organically and get that detail moving uh, before you get too much detail in one area uh, as you move through this drawing. Okay, so I took a very quick pass, and then I took a second pass. Um, there's still plenty of details I still need to worry about. Um, I'm just noticing I didn't do the tool in his hand yet. Some of the angle was a little bit weird on that. Um, but I've come in and I've got most of the larger proportions planned. Um, from this point, I'm just gonna continue to refine. Just remember that the most important thing is that you get the larger proportions planned first. Uh, remember, in the later stages of this game, uh, we are going to be adding value, uh, or the illusion of value, through hatching and cross-hatching um, throughout the dense area of this piece. Notice I did not attempt to do any of that. Uh, these parallel lines all the way through the sky, or these uh, contour hatching lines here in the ground plane, or any of this dense stuff down here or within his form, um, much of that can come later. Uh, I might not even do any of that, or the majority of that, in graphite at all. Uh, the first time I do that, I might be able to trust myself to use the liner. Um, if and when that happens, that will only be because that I've taken the time to plan the larger elements uh, very accurately with graphite, so that the internal elements within those uh, spaces, I can trust myself and just apply those for the first time. Uh, so taking your time on a good graphite drawing to really accurately get your space uh, is very important uh, as it will really pay off in the long run uh, as we move into ink um, in the later stages of this drawing.